What does it feel like to you personally, not to your group, but to you as a male, what does that feel like to hear yourself blaming and complaining about another man and that you can't make it because some other man to keep you down. I don't know what that feel like. I've never had that in my life. What does that feel like to believe that a white man or a Mexican man or any man could keep you down so you got to complain about it rather than overcoming it? What does that feel like? Or do you believe that human beings are in a fallen state? I believe blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians are in a fallen state. The white man that you see today is not in a fallen state except falling from the greatness that he once enjoyed at the hands of slaves. But he, the white people are not in a fallen state? No. no. But everybody else is, a, is in a fallen state? Well, blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians have been in a fallen state since, we, since we've been here in America. And what does it mean to be in a fallen state? The fallen state meaning falling from our identity? fallen from understanding who our oppressor is and having no knowledge of how to get out of that condition. So we teach blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians to be self-sufficient outside of depending on other races to fix us. Why do you include Hispanics? Hispanics don't even like black people at all, and they don't want to be a part of your group. Why do the blacks say black and brown, black and brown, black Hispanics and others, when no one really like black people? Especially nope. nowadays, why are you people involved in the Hispanic? They don't like y'all. I got you. The Hispanics are also descendants of the twelve tribes but of the nation. I know, but they don't. I don't. They don't want to be a part of you. When you say black and Hispanic, they don't want the black Sam that they are part of it. Well, you might want to come into our organization. You would have a different opinion of what you just said. And so even that divisiveness that black and brown people had, when you go they through history. They still have it, not had. They still have it. When I'm saying had, it's because I'm going to give you, like, there's always a root to everything. So the root of black and brown hatred is because when blacks first came over here to North America as slaves, you know who we teamed up with? Our brown brothers. And you know what the white man and his cunning nature did? He started letting black people have <laughs> uh, brown slaves. He started letting the Native Indians have black slaves. Oh, and it would create a forever animosity between the two of us. Instead of looking at the common enemy, because we were taught that the Native Indians was our enemy. So you're telling me that it, it's the white people have not fallen away from God. The blacks, the Mexicans, the Chinese, and others are the only ones who've fallen away from God, but not the white people. They still have a relationship with God. The white man has never believed in God. Ever. But then you said that only the, the colored people are in a fallen state, not the white people. I, I didn't say colored people. The, you know, said the blacks, the Mexicans, and other. They are the only are... one in the fallen state, right? Right. Because and so white, white man... people have not fallen. No, they rule America. So they have not fallen. Fallen into. Listen, the white man is doing exactly what he wants to do. So he's not in a fallen state. No. Amazing. I bet the white people will be glad to hear that. If white people are not in a fallen state, why are they so afraid of the blacks? You know why they're afraid of the blacks? Why? Because they're afraid if the blacks come out of that fallen state, then they will be in a fallen state. That's why they're afraid. And the proof of that is, like I said, when you go to before 1964, the black household was the greatest thing going. And the white man strategically targeted that. No, it was the black civil rights leaders who did that. Let me ask you this. Um, you, do you believe white people are superior? No. Do you believe in white supremacy? No. I don't believe in white supremacy and the fact that they're supreme, but the white man does have the power to lock black men up, black women up. He does have the power to put drugs in our community, not in their community. He does have the power to hire and fire. So he does have that power. <laughs> what does it feel like to you personally, not to your group, but to you as a male? What does that feel like to hear yourself blaming and complaining about another man and that you can't make it? because some other man to keep you down. I don't know what that feels like. I've never had that in my life. 
What does that feel like to believe that a white man or a Mexican man or any man can keep you down so you got to complain about it rather than overcoming it? What does that feel like? Well, well me being an alpha male myself, I don't know what that feels like. Then why are you, are you complaining for other beta males? No, I've never said that, though. But pointing out crime, pointing out crimes is not complaining. But you're complaining about the white man. No, but you're going away from what I just asked. Because I hear a lot of black males sounding like black women, and they're complaining about some some white man keeping them down, and they can't make it because of the white man. As a male, right. you said you don't believe the white man can keep you down, right? White man hasn't kept me down. So what wanted, have you done to keep the white man from keeping you down personally? I got you. I'm a, I'm coming right to your answer. I'm just walking you to it so you can understand because I know you respect white men, so I'm using them. So I'm teaching you how to be an alpha. <laughs> you like, you like, I'm not a beta male. Nah, you in between alpha. I won't say you all the way beta. You like in between <laughs> alpha and beta. We're going to call you A and B. That's what we're <laughs> So now I said that to say me personally, because you asked me personally, yeah. I am personally not oppressed, but my people are. Why you are not personally oppressed? I'm, let me let me just finish. I am not personally oppressed, but my people are. And the reason why they are is because black people are taught to forget what happened to them. And if you don't face what happened to you, you'll never get a solution to empower you to become the alphas that you are. But why are you not you personally know? oppressed, you? Because why am I not personally oppressed? Yes. Because I was raised to never be inferior to no man. And who raised you That's that way? My mother and father. So why don't you teach that to the blacks rather than bring up all this stuff that doesn't exist anymore? You believe in God, right? Yes. You believe that what God says is law, right? Yes. So how can I raise up a nation and not tell them what God said? But God does not blame someone else. I didn't say anything. But God does say, remember what I did to the children to Egypt. God does say that. Remember when I brought you out. Our whole feast days in Israel. But when he is said remember, that means we don't have to worry because he got us. He loved us Christ and he got remember. us. But he never complained about the white man. You know he didn't teach anyone else to complain, but he taught them to overcome. But do you know why God said to remember? Do you know why? Yes. If you don't, why did he say to remember? So that we would know how to live and see a way to live when we remember him. Right. So now we have to remember what happened with our ancestors of old. But he didn't blame the white man because all people have enslaved someone at some point in time. But let me ask, if the blacks had a father and mother as you did growing up, would they be complaining about the white people today? Well, I didn't have my father my whole life. Oh, who did you have? So I primarily had my mother and my father was like in and out because he had an addiction problem. So you were not close to your father? No, I was. I'm not I'm not saying that to say that I wasn't close to him, but my father, my my life story is every other black man's life, life story. You grow up, when I, mean, I say every, of course it's not literal, but it's majority, right. especially in the 70s, 80s, and 90s and stuff like that. Right. So I grew up in a broken home. Now, if anybody can look at me and say, damn, Tazaria grew up in a broken home, look what he was able to overcome. How did he do that? And I could say, God did that. And then now we can inspire other black people. And they say, well, what did God say to do? God said there's certain things you're supposed to eat, certain things you're supposed to celebrate, certain people you're supposed to love, and certain people you're not supposed to love. Do you believe our battle is a spiritual battle or a physical battle? Spiritual first, physical second. Do you believe in God? Yes. How do you know you believe in God? Because I keep his commandments. And what are his commandments? His commandments are the 613 laws that you find throughout the Bible. And do you do you love your neighbor as yourself? I love my neighbor as myself. That's correct. So do you love white people? He's not my neighbor. Do you, do you love white people? He's not my neighbor. Do you love white people? He's not my neighbor. Do you love white people in ambassador? But he's not my neighbor. And what's the answer so no. to that? No. You don't love white people? No. And do your God love white people? No. Right. 
God only loves the uh, children of Israel. You as a pastor should know that. Do you love God? Yes. And if you love God, how can you love him or hate your neighbor? 